It's a beautiful day in Fort Collins, Colorado, and I'm in a neighborhood over by the Kathy Fromm Open Space checking out some Trek bikes with Stephanie Jones. She's over there in the van. <laughs> and this one, this is the Dual Sport Plus. I guess Trek sells the Dual Sport in a non-electric uh, version, but the Plus, that's what you're getting. You're getting electric assist. In this case, Shimano Steps. Uh, really great system for just the neighborhood riding, commuting, city type of stuff. And if you look at these tires, uh, they're fairly efficient. Uh, they're not super wide. They're not going to add a lot of weight. And yet they have they have the knobs, so they're going to be a little bit more comfortable, give you a little bit more traction. 700 by 38. So this is like your, it's roughly equivalent to like 28 inch. And it's what, it's the, the rim size that a lot of, of road bikes have. Um, so you should be coasting efficiently and just get that smooth feel. Lower attack angle so it just coasts right over cracks and things versus the smaller wheel diameter lowers the bike. Uh, but uh, oftentimes, um, you know, the higher tack angle just changes the feel. I love that this one comes with a suspension fork. This is 63 millimeters of travel, and it's the SR Suntour NRX. It's not like super high end. It's a coil fork, but it does have preload adjust and lockout, which is nice because if you're someone, you know, you're pedaling and you feel the bike bobbing like that, you're losing efficiency. And if it's a smooth street like this, well, you don't need the you don't need the suspension and yet it has it this is a bike that you could take on like a little dirt trail across a section of park or something like this so we were we were joking about this earlier and Seth was like yeah it's like a colorado commuter because it's a little bit more capable i think with those tires and with a little bit of suspension i love that it has a bottle cage provision right here you could also use that for a mini pump or for a folding lock lots of options it's just nice to have those because this is a diamond frame tends to be a little bit stiffer and it comes in four different sizes so you have a whole range uh, of I guess just getting that fit right um, this is a complementary bike to the Nico plus which is it's more of a mid-step so if you can imagine if this top tube instead of being kind of high like that if it came down I have reviewed that bike separately that one it, it comes in three sizes and it's going to be a bit more approachable for someone who has a lower inseam um, it, it may be a more petite rider I'm on the 20 inch frame and this goes up to 22 and a half. So I was really impressed. Like if you're someone who's a taller uh, person and, and you, you still want to have an electric bike, there aren't a ton of choices, but this is one of the, the better options for the 20 inch size. That's like the large and it, it only weighed 43 pounds. I was really impressed because a lot of these electric bikes weigh close to 50 um, or more than 50 in some cases. Maybe that's because it doesn't have fenders or a rack installed but those don't add that much weight and it does have provisions for those so you can see the bosses right there and then the threaded eyelets down here we even have um, like a fender boss right there in the middle so if you just wanted to put a rear fender sometimes they have a fender that's combined with a pannier hanger on the side and, and we do have two threaded eyelets on the side so i love that also while we're down looking at the drivetrain we got 10 speed shimano dr with shadow plus that that little gray lever that's a clutch so if we put it down in the off position the chain's a little bit looser and shifting is kind of fluid it feels sort of normal and when you lock it up it tightens the chain and and that's great for if you're on some of that that loose maybe like a gravel road or something uh, or if you tend to ride at higher speeds and you just notice the chain bouncing around it's going to tighten things up and that's really great uh, when combined with electric assist because you do tend to ride a little bit faster and uh, for longer distances on average 11 to 36 tooth so 10 sprockets that's pretty awesome a great range there love that the chain ring has a plastic guide so it's it sort of surrounds the chain on both sides. The chain's not gonna fall off as easily if you are on one of those rough gravel roads. Absolutely love that. Shimano cranks, I believe these are 175, yep. And then we've got the Welgo M21 pedals. I'm not quite sure if these are stock, but a lot of electric bikes and bikes in general come with this sort of cage style. Uh, this is one area I would consider upgrading because my feet, I don't know, I just like to have a bigger, almost like a BMX type of pedal. You can get those for like 20 bucks from your shop. And I think Trek even sells um, a whole bunch of pedals. Their in-house brand is this Bontrager, uh, named after someone from the company. I'm, I'm trying to get that right. Who's the Bontrager guy? Keith Bontrager. Keith Bontrager. Okay, cool. So shout out to Keith. Like it's pretty awesome to, uh, you know, Trek's one of the big three, right? Trek Giant specialized and and they are a real leader they innovate a lot uh, with with different technology I was looking at their Powerfly mountain bike and it's kind of got this like locking system built into uh, the, the head tube and headset so that you don't oversteer and hit the frame but they were able to get that 
the down tube straighter, which makes it stiffer. I mean, we're talking high end stuff, not relevant on, on a bike like this. This is a hard tail. You already get the, the basic suspension, it's good enough. But for people who want to smooth it out even more, this is 27.2 millimeter seat post. You could swap that out with a seat post suspension. Thudbuster, Body Float, even uh, SR Suntour, they've got their NCX suspension post or a super cheap one on Amazon. And, and it would just kind of like, it just smooths it out a little bit more if you do tend to, maybe you get this bike and you notice like, I've been riding for a while and I'm, I'm starting to get a little stiff. That's the kind of little upgrade you can do to, to take, it, uh, take it further, improve that ride quality. Love that it comes with ergonomic locking grips. Again, Bontrager, we got uh, kind of a rib design and these are very comfortable and they're gonna take some of that tingling feeling that people get from the, just the round uh, grips and, and they're gonna just give you something a little bit thicker to, to hold on to. I appreciate those. I usually swap my, my grips out with ergonomic when I get bikes. I call this like two or th maybe like three finger level levers. Uh, Shimano hydraulic disc brakes, 160 millimeter front and rear. Good enough for city, kind of urban riding. Quick release on both wheels so you can take them off easily, service a flat yourself through the spokes. Maybe you're gonna toss this in the back of your car and you don't have a car as big as Stephanie's car over there. You need to break this thing down a little bit. You can, but when you lock it up, keep an eye on this because you know, I'm again, I'm assuming you kind of know what's what's up with locks and the shop can help you. But if you just lock the wheel, well, then they can steal the frame because it's quick release. Or if you just lock the, the wheel and the front part of the bike, they could steal your rear wheel. The good part is all the, you know, the wheel and the uh, cassette and the disc brake rotor, that's all standard. It's easy to replace, but it's still a bummer if your bike gets swiped like that. Uh, standard kickstand here, not adjustable length. And you'll notice I'm using a rock because I wanted to stand this up straight for photos. All their bikes kind of have these basic kickstands and the bikes lean a little bit more, which to me is, is inconvenient because I'm doing photos, but you know, I think Trek kind of knows what they're doing and they probably lean it so it doesn't tip as easily. Coming up here to the cockpit, you can see it's a 90 millimeter stem with seven degree rise and they flipped it. So it's a little bit more aggressive right now. If you wanted to make that even more aggressive and get this body position where you're really leaning down, almost like a road bike, uh, you can do that because they've got a 20 millimeter spacer and a 10 millimeter spacer. So you can move those above the stem, brings the stem down, makes your, your e a little bit more aggressive that way. Earlier, I was talking about the Nico Plus versus the Dual Sport Plus. They're kind of companion bikes, almost like a his and hers, if you will. I like the paint on this one. Kind of, it's a little bit more masculine, like matte black. It's got the red chevrons here, almost like, you know, military stripes or something going on. It just, it, it looks nice. The standover height is 30 inches here versus on the Nico Plus, it was 25. So that's what I'm talking about in terms of approachability, but the frame's gonna be a little bit more stiffer and you get those bottle cage bosses here. So if you're someone who's right in between and you could go for the high step, the big trade-offs are just the paint color, the standover height, and this one gives you the bottle cage bosses and a little bit more frame stiffness. So worth considering. Uh, and then back up to, to the handlebars, just kind of getting a lay of the land up here. Trigger shifters on the right. We got those, those brake levers. They are adjustable reach too. You can see a set screw, so you could bring these in a little bit if you have um, just smaller fingers, or maybe you're wearing gloves in the winter and you, you can't reach as far and really get, get your hands around that uh, lever. I think, gosh, I think we've hit so many things on this. I'm, I'm just gonna jump into the drivetrain. So this is the Shimano Steps center drive that we're looking at. 250 watt nominal up to 500 watt peak, 50 newton meters of torque. Not bad. Um, compared to like the Bosch performance line, they offer like 60 or 63 newton meters. It's a little bit louder with Bosch and it's got a smaller proprietary chain ring, whereas this just has a standard, you know, it's. It, it looks a little bit more normal, and in some ways it covers up the motor, at least from the right side of the bike. If we go to the other side, you can see the motor. Just that little drive unit there, Shimano Steps. And then the battery pack. I love that the newer versions of this battery pack have uh, on-bike charging, so you can plug in right there. You don't need to take the, the battery pack off every time. And for people who park in their garage or whatever, that's nice. Some of the older Shimano stuff, you had to take the battery off every time. Well, you can still take the battery off pretty easily and it does this side slide thing. There we go. Right, slide it to the side, nice. So that's cool because some like Bosch and some of the other ones, you, you bring it up and you can collide with the tubing. This one comes off to the side. It's got that little plastic handle, 36 volt, 11.6 amp hours, uh, larger than average like capacity, lithium ion cells, really reliable. 
uh, pretty standardized. So if in the future you wanted to get another battery or if you drop this one or something, you're going to be able to find it. Shimano is a huge brand. They make the drivetrain. They make the disc brakes. Like, it, you know, it's, it's a huge brand like Trek. Uh, this battery, it, you know, it does have that, that little uh, charge indicator on the side, which is nice. So let's say you're in your house and you're like, oh, I don't want to put it on the bike and boot up the bike. How full is it? Do I need to charge it? We can press that little button and you hopefully you can kind of see here. There's three, there we go, three out of five dots. Okay, so, you know, this isn't completely charged, but it's got some juice and we could charge it off the bike, but look at that plug. You see that, that it's different than that plug. So the charger for this bike, it has a little like cable adapter thing that you have to hold on to, keep track of. Um, that's a complaint for me. I, I'd prefer if it just used the same charging standard on or off the bike. Um, just it'd be more convenient that way. You wouldn't worry about losing that little cable thing. It's, it's one of my only gripes though. You do not have to leave the keys in when riding, which is great. They would jingle around. Uh, the bike looks pretty, pretty sleek, but the rear hydraulic disc brake is externally routed and it might make it easier to service. A lot of the other cabling is internally routed to keep it really clean. So standard straight head tube. Um, yeah, I guess that's kind of it. Maybe we should boot it up. But before we do, the other thing that's removable is this display panel. There's a little plastic thing at the bottom there and you just slide it off. You could take that in with you so no one tampers with it at the bike rack. Um, I think you'd probably always want to take it with you because it is so easy to, to swipe. Press the power button here or down on the battery pack. There we go. So it did it there. You can also power on the battery and it'll boot the display. And we've got just a bunch of different readouts to cycle through. We can use that black button over there on the remote pad. So we can go to this like full readout where it tells you your estimated range in eco, normal, and high. But that's gonna, that's gonna surface again later. So let's go forward. We've got our time at the bottom along with miles per hour, that's speed battery percentage. I love that they have percentage and not not just like ticks because percentage is much more precise. And then let's see, average speed, max speed, distance, odometer, and then back to range again. Again, right before it goes to like the full range readout, I like to just keep it on that this menu range because now I can arrow up between the three levels of assist, go up to eco and it says 30 miles, normal 27 miles and high 22 miles. This is one of the more efficient you know, drive systems I've seen. And I do think it's in part because it, it's not quite as torquey. You don't see this particular Shimano drive system on mountain bikes and stuff the way you do with, with Bosch or Yamaha. This is more of just a city, get around town. It's quiet, it's efficient. So coming back to the display, that was pretty cool. Do you see, look at that. It's, I think this is like the transflective design. It looks pretty good even when the sun's shining directly on it. Okay, so coming back here, there is a light button, but there are no lights wired in. That's something the shop may be able to help with. And it's a bit of a gripe. It'd be nice if it, if you know, coming back to like sort of a city bike, it's great when you can run everything off that main battery, but then it adds cost and complexity and stuff. So that's kind of what's going on there. The light button doesn't do anything by default. Um, and there are no, there's no like charging ports or anything. Some of the other systems uh, have micro usbs and stuff and now yeah, that's just a screw just kind of double checking yeah nothing um anyway so we we can arrow up all the way to high and it says 20 22 miles per hour um you might have heard all that beeping right like when i'm screwing around with this stuff it really bugs me so one of the cool things you can do is hold plus and minus here on the button pad for a couple seconds and check this out, you get access to all the settings. So you can clear the trip meter, set the clock, start mode, so you can you can tell it like, okay, how, how do you wanna start? Backlight, brightness, beep, oh, okay, off. Oh, so much nicer, awesome. Change from kilometers to miles, language, font color, auto, and then exit. So that's, I, I really gotta hand it to Shimano. I feel like their system's just, it's just that much more approachable. Um, I really appreciate that. So without further ado, I think I'm gonna hop on this thing, stow that kickstand, do some neighborhood riding here when this car passes. I'm gonna start it in, let's see. I think I'm gonna start it in high, just cause you know, I want you to hear the, the noise that the motor produces. Cool. 
I was doing a little experiment right there where I, I wasn't pushing very hard. And because this measures like wheel speed, pedal cadence and pedal torque, it's, it's more responsive. Like if you just pedal gently, thing, all things are good. And then you really start to pedal and it picks up. That is so cool. There we go. And we're hitting our max assisted RPM. So that means the motor can't spin any faster. It needs me to shift up. You can hear it whining when I do shift up. There we go. Our top speed increases. So that's how this works. It's kind of like a manual transmission car. To hit different speeds, you really need to shift actively. And shifting feels pretty smooth despite this system not having shift sensing. And I think that's because, again, it's a multi-sensor speed, cadence, and torque. And if you just ease off a little bit when you shift, it's not so bad. It doesn't, doesn't bang as much. I mean, we're riding uphill on a hot day. I'm getting a little winded because I'm talking and stuff, but I'm not sweating at 20 miles. You know, that was probably like 17, 18 miles per hour. Really stable platform here. Feeling really smooth. So you got like a brake test in here. Really smooth, those hydraulic disc brakes. That was just one-handed braking, by the way. Suspension, feeling good. The motor starts and stops very quickly and it's just smooth. I mean, you don't notice the noise once you're up to speed. I think, you know, I kind of purposefully do it at high RPM, low speed, so you can get some idea but this is one of the quieter electric bikes out there. The top speed uh, on the dual sport is limited to 20 miles per hour. This is a class one electric bike, it tends to be allowed in more places. But Trek also now has the Super Commuter Plus 8S. That S stands for speed. That's a high speed commuter platform, also a high step, comes in three different sizes. For someone who you know, wants those fenders, racks and lights, that's all included but that's a $5,000 bike versus a $3,000 bike. So, you know, you end up paying a little bit more. It doesn't have suspension. It has a carbon fiber fork and some bigger tires to help give you that comfort. Whew. Well, I've had a lot of fun with this. That's the Dual Sport from Trek. For the full write-up on this, including some standover measurements, comments, some pictures and stuff, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Big thanks to Stephanie over there and Trek for you know, hooking me up, giving me a chance to test this out. And when I say hooking me up, I mean just meeting me, you know, providing uh, some bikes to, to review and share with you guys. As always, ride safe, have fun.